Let me talk about calorimetry. Calorimetry just means measuring heat. And literally what you do when you do these calorimetry things, typically what I did when I was in high school, okay, was you take a, a boiling beaker of water and Here's some water that's boiling, and, and you stick a chunk of, you know, some, some sort of metal, usually it's a piece of metal, and you heat it up until it's at 100 degrees Celsius, and then you quickly drop it in here, right? And heat flows out of this into the water until it reaches some equilibrium temperature, right? And what happens then is, is we can use conservation of energy. We can say that the heat lost by the hot stuff is gained by the cold stuff, right? And ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to do MCAT, right? MC change in T for the hot stuff equals MC change in T for the cold stuff. If we make the delta T's positive, right? That's what we can say. All right, so this is the key formula. I do have somewhere we use ML, but you know, it's the same idea. Typically in, in calorimetry, this is what we use. And then typically what they would do is they would compare the, um, they would actually compare the, the ability of this thing to hold heat with water Right, water being uh, having one calorie takes one calorie to raise it one degree Celsius. Right, that was its specific heat was one in chemistry units. Right, um, and then just one little word here before I go on to an example. Notice that, that this MCAT would be the, the the hot stuff. Right, okay. Notice that there's actually a stirring rod, a thermometer, and a beaker. Right, so it would really be MCAT, and then MCAT for the beaker. And then you could say, you know, if you want to be really careful, you're in an MCAT, right? The, the thermometer would also absorb some of the heat and maybe even the stirring rod, right? So sometimes there's several MCATs on this side. Um, let me just, I'll do an example, a simple example where there's just, just one thing. Heat goes from one thing to another, um, right? So, so uh, uh, here we've got 0.231 kilograms of an unknown substance, right? We're going to figure out the C of that substance, right? He's dropped into 0.481 kilograms of water at 18 degrees Celsius, and the final temperature is 32 degrees Celsius, right? Um, and we want to find the specific heat of the substance. So neglect the calorimeter cup. So typically what you do, by the way, is you do this experiment when you make the cup a styrofoam cup. Um, and styrofoam, of course, you know, has negligible mass, and, and it's very good insulator, right? Styrofoam is a God's gift to calorimetry or something like that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to set this up. I'm going to go MCAT uh, for the unknown substance, right? Hot substance, right? Equals MCAT for the water. For the water. Right? Heat lost equals heat gained. Okay? And then I'm going to go, uh, let's see, we know the mass. So I go 0 0.231 kilograms. And then we don't know C. We're going to see what it is. <laughs> okay. Um, so then this change in temperature is 98 to 32. Right? And I know that it actually um, it should be negative or something like that, but, but I don't do it that way. Okay. And then let's see. The water is what gains it. So here's the mass of the water, right? 0 0.481 kilograms. And then we know water is 4,186 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And then this change in temperature is 32 minus 18. Right? And that's because it uh, it gains heat, right? It started at 18 and ended up at 32, right? And this is this is real typical. This is what they, they always look like. The hardest thing, though, is when we don't know that temperature, right? Um, that's what the next video is about. Okay, so to solve for C, to see what it is, Okay, just do this whole side. This whole side here is going to bust out into uh, joules and then divide by degrees Celsius, right, and kilograms. And we'll get joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. So this side here is 0 0.481 times 4186 times parentheses, 32 minus 18 and parentheses. That's like 28,188.54, right? Now I'm going to divide by this. I'm going to go divide it by... 0.231, and then uh, divide again by, I also have to divide by parentheses 98 minus 32, because I'm too lazy to figure out that that's uh, 64, is it? 66. Yeah, see, it's a good thing I didn't just do that. Okay. And I get that C is equal to 1848. 
okay, 0.9 joules per degree Celsius. Huh? Which I guess with two sig figs, I would very sadly write that uh, 1800. Yeah, we only have two sig figs. All right, so that's calorimetry. The next example in the next video is how to deal with, with if you have to solve for that final temperature. Okay, um, and I've got some tricks for that. Uh, but anyway, yeah.